Okay, so my case this week is two cats, both of which were peeing in places where they shouldn't, but due to the hard work of the owner, they had managed to resolve it for one of the cats um, by putting in like lots of really good cat friendly stuff. Like they've cat proofed the garden, they had really good trays and plenty of them um, and put some really good stuff in place. So it worked for one cat, but the other one, it was still happening. But as we spoke, what we realized is that there had been like a bit of a falling out early on between the two cats and the one that's still peeing had found it super stressful. So like she had had a stressful time because of that. And then she developed cystitis. Um, so cystitis, although obviously it's a medical issue, does have a stress element to it. But what I find with loads of people or loads of people that have cats who do suffer from cystitis, that it sparked from a stressful event, but then continues once that stressful event has gone. So what I wonder is whether the cystitis becomes like its own stressor. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yes, like the cystitis could have been caused by this stressful event, but now she's feeling poorly and it's like uncomfortable and it's stressful to use the trays because it might hurt. So we find that once you've got cystitis once, well, this is my theory, once the cat has got cystitis once, then um, it could happen again and again because that's the stressor now. And so it feeds into like, I, w I was stressed, now I feel bad. Because I feel bad, now I'm stressed again. And so the cystitis continues. So it's really important obviously to work closely with the vet, which this couple were, which is fantastic. And um, I do she doesn't have cystitis at the moment, but there's that ongoing association with like, last time I used that tray, it really hurt. So I don't want to use it again. Or at least makes them like, I wouldn't say nervous, I, do, I guess like apprehensive to use them and anxious, I guess, of like, is it going to hurt? It might not, but is it? And it causes them to go places where they feel most safe. So on the sofas or on the beds, which um, on the sofa was where this cat was, is targeting most frequently when, when it, she's using the trays like most of the time. But when it does happen, it tends to happen on the sofa. So that's something that we're working towards or like working through. And it's really important to work closely with the vet to make sure medically we're doing, doing, like doing everything we can. And also like we're making the trays as easy to use as possible, even if it's just temporary, like putting a tray exactly where she's peeing or nearby. Um, and then once she's comfortably using it, moving it elsewhere. Um, and also thinking about like, can we set up a new tray that, uh, or something new about the trays that's gonna break that association. So maybe a different type of litter, a different shape, a different place. And just thinking like, so she's not got that like, oh, is this gonna hurt? But it's really difficult to do. Um, so it will be like a trial and error situation to see what works and what doesn't and working through that. Also, we had Fig's results back from his wee test and he has an infection and it's really upsetting because the only reason we did this wee test is that like just a routine, like, oh, let's just do a wee test and see what comes back. Just make sure we're covering everything. So I have no idea of how long he's had it. And I was really sad when the results came back, but um, he's like, he, he, I had no idea that he was had an infection he, there's no change in his behavior which is common with most cats like they hide it so well um and he's diabetic so apparently according to the vets it's just a complication that can come with diabetes um although he's two years into his di diabetes um diagnosis so this is the first time we've had any sort of complications so hopefully he's okay well we've started his antibiotics and the vet was like do you want the, the liquid medication or the tablets and I was suddenly like oh, I've never had to give Fig a tablet and he has twice daily insulin injections and I would take that over trying to put a tablet down his throat any day I just don't know I'm sure I could do it <laughs> um, if I tried but I was like what's, what's gonna work best so we went for the tablets because um, apparently it tastes nicer they're a bit more palatable and I've been giving it to him in his food which I'm gonna do a video about because it's more complicated than you think you think you just whack it in food and I'll eat it but there are a few sort of tips and tricks that I think can help set up a success. So I'm going to post about that soon. Um, but yeah, we're two down. We have, well, one day down, two tablets down. So nine more days to go, but hopefully he's okay. Um, and we're enjoying the sunshine. Look at this. Hi, kitty. Hello. <laughs> he spends most of his day outside when it's sunny. But anyway, I'll leave it there for today. I hope you guys are all keeping well. Let me know how your cats are doing and I will see you next time. Take care. So...